like a lot of folks, I was in high school at the time and I knew uh, that I wanted to do something to serve my country. A lot of time at sea, I had 18 and a half years of sea duty in my career, and I commanded uh, USS Yorktown, a ship built by Ingalls. While I was the captain of the Yorktown, we deployed as part of the WASP Expeditionary Strike Group. I loved being in the Navy, and I absolutely loved serving aboard ship, and the next best thing to serving aboard ship is building them. I was 17 years old when I decided to join the military. My name is Azalea McSwain, and I am a journeyman rigger here at Huntington Ingalls. I wanted to either go to the Air Force or the Navy, but the Navy called me, and when they called, I answered that call. My name is John Madajemu. I'm a shift supervisor that's uh, under the preventive maintenance uh, unit of test and trial. I served actively for 11 years, then completed the remaining years in reserve. I served on the Kiosage, that was my first vessel. My second vessel was the WASP, LHD-1. When I got the orders and it said, go home and short, okay, I'm ready for the challenge, you know, I'm ready to do this. At the time, I didn't even know it was built at Ingalls. I learned that after the fact. I never knew I wanted to work for Ingalls, you know, but I was proud to be from the, the southern coast where the ship came from because that ship ran good. It was a well-built ship. I joined the Marine Corps in 1994 when I was 19 years old. I've served on uh, three amphibious ships, the USS Saipan, LHA-2, the USS Guam, LPH-9, and the USS Tortuga, LSD-46. We're a proud family. I'm a third generation shipbuilder here at Ingalls. Knowing that my father had a hand uh, building the uh, USS Saipan that both me and my older brother Ricky served on, and the, uh, the Way City later that my twin brother served on. I can say with pride, I could tell my uh, fellow Marines, you know, hey, my dad helped build this ship in Pascagoula, Mississippi at Ingalls Shipbuilding. I first joined the Navy when I was 19 years old and got orders to go to the USS Wasp, the first class LHD, and I commissioned boat did pre-com on the boat. But when I came down for pre-com on the WASP, I always said I wanted to come back. 17 years later, I came back down to Ingalls. I've worked on all the LPD amphibs from 20 all the way up to 30 right now. I've worked on LHA-7, currently working on LHA-8. These amphibious ships that Ingalls builds are extremely versatile. You hear folks refer to them as the Swiss Army knife of, uh, of ships because they have so many tools in their toolkit. Today, the LHAs that we build are the first ships to carry the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. The aircraft that the ships carry, the landing craft that the ships carry, hundreds and hundreds of troops that enable the United States Navy and the Marine Corps to land those uh, sailors and Marines and put them in places to provide assistance, to do medical evacuations, to do just a whole host, uh, I think it's 20 some odd missions that they're uh, capable of doing. The Marines are the guys that go in and fight for us. We take them to the fight. You know, we make sure the fight doesn't come to America. We meet you out there. We put people on your beach, you know. Our enemies abroad can have no worse enemy than the U.S. military. Our friends can have no greater friend than the U.S. military. Welcome to Ingalls Shipbuilding. The christening of Fort Lauderdale LPD-28 is about to begin. Please silence all electronic devices for the duration of the ceremony. Personal photography is welcome, but please be courteous to those around you. Feel free to share your experience today on social media. Make sure to use hashtag LPD28 in your posts. During the national anthem, persons not in uniform should stand if they are able, facing the flag with their right hand over their heart. All veterans are authorized to render the hand salute. Your safety and security are important to us this morning. Please adhere to state-recommended guidelines for social distancing and face coverings during this event. Medical personnel are available here on site should you require assistance. 
Please also note that today's ceremony is being live streamed on Facebook and YouTube for those who are not able to attend in person. Thank you. Our ceremony will begin momentarily. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please make your way to your seats. The christening will begin shortly. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Ingalls Shipbuilding and to the christening ceremony for Fort Lauderdale LPD 28. I am Jonathan Brandon, an Ingalls Shipbuilder, and I have the privilege of serving as today's Master of Ceremonies. Please note your health and safety are priorities to us. Due to guidance from the CDC in an effort to reduce the spread of COVID-19, we have modified this event from its conventional format. Now, I invite you to please rise, if you are able, as I introduce our official party. Official party, as I call your name, please wave so we can acknowledge you. Captain James Corasimo, United States Navy, Prospective Commanding Officer, Fort Lauderdale, LPD 28. <laughs> Mr. Thomas M. Rivers, Executive Director for Amphibious Auxiliary and Sea Lift Office, Program Executive Office, Ships. <laughs> Ms. Biliana Anderson, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Ship Programs. <laughs> Vice Admiral William Galinas, United States Navy Commander, Naval Sea Systems Command. Our principal speaker, the Honorable Dean Trentalis, Mayor of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Please join me in welcoming the President of Ingalls Shipbuilding and Executive Vice President of Huntington Ingalls Industries, Mrs. Carrie Wilkinson. And now, please help me recognize our ship's sponsor, the Honorable Meredith Berger, Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Energy, Installations, and Environment. <laughs> Several other ceremony participants are with us today. Would you please wave and be recognized as I call on you? Miss Catherine Olivia Messing, Maid of Honor. Miss Molly Elizabeth Messing, Maid of Honor. And unable to be with us today, Miss Charlotte Summer Berger, Maid of Honor. United States Representative Stephen Palazzo of Mississippi's 4th Congressional District. Commander Christopher Matassa, United States Navy LPD-17 Class Program Manager's Representative, Supervisor of Shipbuilding Gulf Coast. 
Mr. Chris Salsville, Principal Assistant Program Manager for Production and Test, PMS 317. <laughs> Lieutenant William Daniel, United States Navy Command Chaplain, Fort Lauderdale, LPD 28. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 133 Color Guard from Gulfport, Mississippi, for our national anthem, for our Pledge of Allegiance, led by Josh Box, Navy veteran, LHA ship design manager here at Ingalls, and for our invocation by Lieutenant Daniel. Color Guard, parade the colors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color Guard, retire the colors. Lieutenant Daniel, command chaplain, will now give the invocation. Let us pray. Holy Father, we pause this morning in the midst of ever-changing times, fads, obstacles, threats, and enemies to praise you for your never-changing name that is forever faithful and true. And to these ever-churning challenges, this warship, awesome in beauty and power, is being birthed to ride upon a sea in a future that could swell and sink her and us. Please forgive us for the times of our arrogance and presumption as we have indeed from time to time trusted in our own wisdom and strength and have broken faith with one another, with our families, with our homeland, and with you. But your property is always to have mercy upon those who humble themselves before you and so we do that this morning, most holy Father. And as we christen the ship today, we humbly ask you to make us all trustworthy stewards of your, of your love and mercy and her power. Please bless the leadership of Captain James Corsimo and his team with holy wisdom. Please bless the varied hands of NAVC Command, of Huntington Ingalls Industries, 
of Soup Ship Gulf Coast, of PMS 317, of PO Ships, of the City of Fort Lauderdale, of the Honorable Meredith Berger, of the present and future Navy and Marine Corps teams, and of our families back home that have all now together become bonded across the generations of naval missions under the future name USS Fort Lauderdale. May we all live her motto, together we fight, with honor, courage, and commitment, trusting in your gracious providence. As the writer penned long ago, eternal Father, strong to save, whose arm hath bound the restless wave, who bids the mighty ocean deep, its own appointed limits keep. O oh, hear us when we cry to thee, for those in peril on the sea. Amen. Thank you, Lieutenant Daniel. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. There are several special guests in our audience today. I ask that you please stand as I call on you. Our ship sponsor is joined by many family members and friends. Please help me welcome them. We also welcome all of our partners and customers from the Navy's program office and the supervisor of shipbuilding, Gulf Coast. Also joining us today are guests from the city of Fort Lauderdale. Please help me welcome them. We also welcome the crew of the future USS Fort Lauderdale, LPD 28. As you know, this special occasion has been delayed due to COVID-19, and we are honored to finally be able to hold this milestone celebration. Since safety restrictions are in place, numerous shipbuilders, crew members, and friends are joining us through live stream. Please join me in providing a special welcome to all of them. And now, please join me in welcoming our host for today's christening ceremony, Mrs. Carrie Wilkinson, President of Ingalls Shipbuilding and Executive Vice President, Huntington Ingalls Industries. Carrie. Good morning. What a wonderful thing to be doing on a Saturday morning. Even in light of the COVID protocols in place, it is wonderful to see everyone this morning. So thank you, Jonathan, for probably the best introduction I have ever gotten. <laughs> Uh, it is indeed an honor and a privilege uh, to welcome everyone to Ingalls Shipbuilding today, uh, whether in person or virtually, uh, for the christening of the Fort Lauderdale LPD 28. The Honorable Meredith Berger, the Honorable Dean Chantralis, Vice Admiral Galinas, Ms. Anderson, Mr. Rivers, Captain Corosimo, Congressman Palazzo, distinguished guests, my fellow shipbuilders, good morning to you all. We are a community of more than 11,000 shipbuilders with sincere purpose and a steadfast mission to build great ships for our nation and for those who dedicate their lives to protect our freedoms. Shipbuilding is a people business and our collective participation today reinforces the importance of the connection we share with one another. But while the connection is very important and I am beyond proud to be standing in front of this ship this morning, it is much more about the people behind it. Shipbuilding is about teamwork and bringing together the most intellectually and physically demanding and challenging efforts that we can imagine for a common purpose. And it is certainly not for the faint of heart. I consider everyone here today and watching from other places to be a part of that resilient and resolute team. People from nearly every part of this country bring their best selves to work every day to make a ship like this one become a reality. Not just the remarkable shipbuilders here at Ingalls Shipbuilding, but all of our suppliers and our industry and customer partners. We each leverage our essential and unique abilities to estimate, to engineer, plan, procure, fit, weld, install, test, and deliver, ultimately a ship that is so much more than just a product. And so then we, as a community of shipbuilders, find milestones like this rewarding. Not only do we get a chance to celebrate a moment in what is becoming the history of this ship, 
we are also afforded the opportunity to take a step back and punctuate that history with emotions of pride, accomplishment, humility, and a recognition of something much bigger than ourselves. To our sponsor, it is a privilege to provide you with a glimpse of what has been so much a part of our lives for the past several years. It is our pleasure to have you here today as this now becomes so much more a part of yours. It has been an incredible honor to build a ship that bears the name of a city with such deep connections to the United States Navy. And like the city of Fort Lauderdale, we here at Ingalls are honored by our decades of partnership with the Navy as well. Because of that connection, we fully comprehend the significance of our work. We will do our part to make Fort Lauderdale ready to enter the fleet. As we know, the Navy does theirs in preparing the crew to bring her to life. While this ship has a special connection to the state of Florida through its name, that connection is made stronger by the ship's sponsor, the Honorable Meredith Berger, a native of that great state. Meredith is the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Energy Installations and Environment. She also served as the Deputy Chief of Staff for the Department of the Navy during the Obama-Biden administration, where she advised the Secretary of the Navy on the formulation, prioritization, and execution of department-wide strategies, policies, plans, and standards. Meredith, it is with respect for your accomplishments and with humility as shipbuilders serving their country in a very unique way that we welcome you here today. We believe this ship is destined for greatness and are proud to be a part of this legacy with you. A very special thank you to you, your family, and to everyone here today. We are now together a part of the legacy that is the USS Fort Lauderdale. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. The Honorable Debbie Wasserman Schultz, United States Representative, Florida's 23rd District, regrets that she was unable to attend today's ceremony. She sends her regards through a letter which I will read at this time. To the crew of the Fort Lauderdale, greetings and congratulations on the christening of the amphibious transport ship, Fort Lauderdale. I am sorry I am unable to join you in person for this wonderful ceremony. Fort Lauderdale has a rich naval history. Its ties to the United States Navy date back to the early 1830s, when Navy Lieutenant Levin Powell commanded the Swamp Sailors during the Second Seminole War. Powell's contingency reinforced Major William Lauderdale's troops, who were stationed along the north bank of the New River, where they constructed the first Fort Lauderdale. It is our understanding that the city of Fort Lauderdale was also an important naval training center during World War II. Radar, gunnery, and parachuting schools operated at the Naval Air Station Fort Lauderdale, which today serves as Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. In addition, West Prospect Airfield, known today as Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport, served as an important training facility for naval aviators, including former President George H.W. Bush. Naming the ship the Fort Lauderdale not only recognizes the city's longtime commitment to the Navy and distinguished role in naval history, but also honors the thousands of retired Navy sailors who call Fort Lauderdale and the surrounding areas their home. I wish all of you a most enjoyable celebration. Sincerely, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Member of Congress. Thank you, Congresswoman Wasserman Schultz. Please welcome Ms. Biliana Anderson, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Ship Programs. kind introduction. To our sponsor, the Honorable Meredith Berger, our maids of honor, Catherine and Molly, who are here today, and Charlotte, who was unable to attend, as well as our flower girl, Grace, Vice Admiral Galinas, flag officers and senior executives, Carrie Wilkinson, representing Ingalls Shipbuilding and our many interesting partners, Captain Curacimo, the crew of Fort Lauderdale, Mayor Trentalis, and Representative Palazzo, thank you so much for joining us today. Our many distinguished guests and to all here today to celebrate the christening of this magnificent warship and those watching at home, good morning and welcome. I have to say on a personal note how uh, joyous it is for me to share this event with so many, I won't say old, I'll say long-standing uh, friends and co-workers. Uh, it's truly um, great to be here with you today. It is just an honor to be here with all of you in Pascagoula. 
one of the most important and vital cities to our Navy, representing the 78th Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Carlos del Toro. It is fitting and appropriate that we acknowledge and say thank you to the thousands of deployed sailors, Marines, soldiers, and airmen who, along with their families, are sacrificing so much for this great nation's freedom. And to all those veterans in the audience today, thank you for your service to our nation. I would also like to thank our hosts here at Ingalls, who have arranged today's wonderful events, and also thank the many men and women responsible for the construction of Fort Lauderdale. Shipbuilding is one of the most difficult undertakings we do as a nation. It takes perseverance, hard work, and attention to detail to meet every milestone in a vessel's construction that allows us to commemorate an event such as today's christening. Shipbuilding is a team effort. It takes a dedicated Navy and industry team to build our nation's fleet. I am reminded of a famous quote that embodies this spirit. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up the men to gather wood, divide the work, and give orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. To the men and women of Ingalls, the supervisor of shipbuilding Gulf Coast, the Navy Program Office, and the Naval Sea Systems Command, it is evident that you do indeed yearn for the vast and endless sea. You have labored tirelessly with your teammates to build this extraordinarily capable ship and I congratulate you and your teams on another job well done. And with this christening today, we celebrate the namesake of this formidable ship, Fort Lauderdale, the Venice of America. LPD-28 is the first naval vessel to be named after your great city. Therefore, it shall always and forever be the standard bearer for those ships that share her name. I am confident it will represent the storied military history and rich cultural identity of your city and serve as a representative of our Navy and our nation as it sails around the world for decades to come. Today is the beginning of a lifelong relationship between the men and women who will sail this great vessel and our sponsor, Secretary Berger. She is in the unique position to serve as both sponsor and serve all of us as Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Energy, Installations, and Environment, ensuring that the Navy is a good steward of our natural resources, infrastructure, and property. She will undoubtedly use her experiences in her role as sponsor and to the benefit of the dedicated sailors and families of Fort Lauderdale. On behalf of Secretary Del Toro, I would like to offer you our thanks and appreciation for serving in a such unique and important roles and to welcome you into the Society of Sponsors of the U.S. Navy. Finally, I want to extend my best wishes and good luck to Captain Carissimo, Commander Murtha, Commander Master Chief McGee, and the officers and crew of Fort Lauderdale in the run-up to sea trials, final delivery, and commissioning next year. You have important work ahead of you. We know and trust you will serve our Navy and our nation well. May God bless Fort Lauderdale, her crew, her sponsor, her namesake, and may God bless America. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Please help me welcome Vice Admiral William Galinas, United States Navy Commander, Naval Sea Systems Command. Hey, good morning, shipbuilders. Representative Palazzo, Mayor Turntillis, industry and Navy leaders, sailors and Marines, family and friends of Navy shipbuilding and our Navy Marine Corps team, and a very special welcome to Secretary Berger, Meredith, thank you for being the sponsor of this great ship and taking on this responsibility. What a great Navy and Marine Corps day. You know, I like uh, Billy Anna was also reflecting on today, and I, I was thinking about going back to the early days of the LPD 17 program, and as I look across the team and how many folks here, you know, really overcame the challenges, we developed relationships, which really now kind of lead us to where we are today with LPD 28. So for everybody out there that had a hand in that, thanks very much. It is truly my honor to be here today representing our Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Mike Gilday. As we christen the future United States ship USS Fort Lauderdale, LPD 28. Named for a patriotic city and Secretary Burgers in my home state of Florida, so here, as I stand in the heart of the Southeastern Conference, 
Go Gators. <laughs> it's also great to be back on the Mississippi coast, where my family and I have so many fond memories. And here in Pascagoula, as we take part in this momentous occasion, as a native of Delray Beach, Florida, which is just north of Fort Lauderdale, I know well the city for which this amazing warship is named. A hub for both cruise ships and commercial maritime trade, the city of Fort Lauderdale really exemplifies why we have a Navy and need amphibious assault ships like the one behind me. The United States is a maritime nation. Our country's security and our prosperity depend on freedom of the seas. This freedom of the seas is the pillar on which global peace and our trade is built. In today's increasingly complex security environment, where the challenges we face from countries like China and Russia are real, the competition is high. We need warships like the Fort Lauderdale and our fleet today. It's ships like Fort Lauderdale that will enable that we that will enable us to live and prosper as free, free people, as Americans. Amphibious transport dock ships like Fort Lauderdale, designed and built here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast at Ingalls Shipyard, provide our Navy and Marine Corps team with an incredibly powerful and flexible war fighting platform. Today, on board many of these ships, built in Gulf Coast shipyards, our Navy and Marine Corps team is on station around the globe and executing their mission. The Iwo Jima Amphibious Readiness Group is steaming in the Arabian Gulf, consisting of the USS Iwo Jima, the USS San Antonio, and the USS Carter Hall, all built in Gulf Coast shipyards, along with the 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit. This team is loaded and combat ready. The American Readiness Group, the America Amphibious Readiness Group, consisting of the USS America, the USS New Orleans, also built in Gulf Coast shipyards, along with the USS Germantown and the 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit is confidently patrolling the Western Pacific. But the, but the capabilities that make these ships such tremendous warships are easily turned into humanitarian missions, as we have recently seen with the deployment of the Arlington departing an, on a mission of mercy to support Haiti earlier this week. To borrow a line from a renowned Marine Corps General and former Secretary of Defense, Jim Mattis, it ships like Fort Lauderdale and others like her that make the United States Navy Marine Corps team no better friend, no worst enemy. Once delivered, this warship will join our Navy and Marine Corps team and expand the advantage that our Navy has against our adversaries. USS Fort Lauderdale will bring versatility, reliability, and strength to our fleet, thanks in large part to the sailors and the Marines who will man her. There are few nations that can build ships like this. Our United States Shipbuilding Industrial Base is the envy of every major Navy in the world. It takes a patriotic and hardworking team of men and women to design, build, test, and deliver these ships. The talents and the skills of our shipbuilders, combined with the tenacity and the toughness of our sailors and Marines, make this team second to none. Make no mistake about it, our Navy is a dominant force upon the ocean because of the skilled artisans that deliver these exceptional ships and because of the best sailors and the Marines in the world that will man them. So in closing, again, I would like to thank our sponsor, Meredith Berger, for accepting her service to our sailors and Marines. Ma'am, your record of service speaks for itself. And the fact that you're a South Floridian, well, that makes you an absolutely perfect choice to serve as a sponsor for this fine ship. 
Today is a great day for our Navy and for our country. In officially naming the ship Fort Lauderdale, we bring her one step closer to delivery. So for all of us that have a role in delivering this ship, let's continue to get after it, okay? Our Navy and our Marine Corps and our country need this ship, the Fort Lauderdale, in our fleet. Thank you all for allowing me to be part of this fantastic ceremony. Go Navy, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Admiral Galinas. And now, a few remarks from our principal speaker, the Honorable Dean J. Trentalis, Mayor of Fort Lauderdale. Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for inviting me here today. It's certainly hard to follow these great speakers and their great words, but uh, hey, it's USS Fort Lauderdale. How cool is that, right? <laughs> We're here to pick it up and take it home with us today. Um, this is really a great honor and privilege for me to be here and represent the city of Fort Lauderdale and its citizens and to thank all those involved with the procurement and the finishing of this uh, great ship uh, with our namesake. Uh, I certainly want to thank the secretary. Thank you so much for uh, uh, having me here today. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, I also want to thank everybody, the Admiral, uh, the Captain, uh, but most importantly, I want to thank those men and women who serve in our armed forces. Thank you for your service. Thank you so much for the gallantry and the commitment and the sacrifice that you and your families make on behalf of each and every one of us who live here in the United States. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just have a few words to say, and um, I know a politician, what is a few words, right? Um, and I think some of the things I wanted to say have already been said by our Congresswoman and, and the Admiral, but some of the things do bear repeating. And part of it has to do with the history and the tradition of Fort Lauderdale and the Navy. The, and as many of you know, the original tradition of, of what Fort Lauderdale was about started with Major Lauderdale, who, uh, who encamped in, in Florida, in South Florida, in particular in the Fort Lauderdale area, uh, and, and is the namesake of our city. I understand that th actually three forts were actually built in his name, all of which are not there anymore. Um, but the reminder is that, uh, that Fort Lauderdale has a, cl a close, uh, long connection to the armed, armed, armed services and what it represents to protect its people. The city proudly remembers the sacrifices that residents have made as members of the military naming our longtime auditorium as War Memorial Auditorium. A statue along our picturesque riverwalk pays homage to Sandy Ninager, an Army lieutenant who died in combat in the Pacific in World War II and earned the Medal of Honor for his gallantry. The Navy and Fort Lauderdale, of course, have a long history together. Uh, as it was said earlier, our port was a military base during World War II, and our current international airport was once a naval air station. But more than that, the people of today who serve in our military, especially in the Navy, have come to understand and appreciate Fort Lauderdale during its fleet week. I don't think there, are, there is anyone who's been in the Navy long enough who has not visited Fort Lauderdale, and I'd like to think that we've been great hosts to you as you've come and visited our community. You know, the, the, this will be the first time that a ship has carried the name USS Fort Lauderdale. What have you been waiting for? With our long history and our connection to the Navy and to the armed services, it's about time that we are finally recognized with a name on a beautiful ship such as the one that's behind me today. So the keel was laid on October 13th, 2017. I think that's a mistake because it was, should have been October 14th, which is my birthday, and I understand this is a gift to me. No? No? Maybe not. Features the design improvements developed in connection with the Navy's development of the next generation dock landing ship, known as the LXR class amphibious warfare ship. The mission of an LPD is to transport expeditionary forces to shore in support of maritime operations, but as the Admiral said, it's also to support humanitarian efforts such as we, we saw recently in Haiti. 
After the seed trials, we hope to soon see the commissioning of the SIP back in Fort Lauderdale, and uh, we know that it will be coming with a full complement of officers and, and commission, uh, commission uh, sailors. Uh, I believe it's 28 officers and 333 enlisted personnel. Is that it, Captain? Something like that. I also want to thank um, especially our folks who did come here from Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we have uh, the folks representing our local Navy League, and that's Lynn Elsasser and Pat Dumont. Thank you for really being here today. But I also want to thank a gentleman who is not here today. His name is Chuck Black. Chuck Black was one of the team that really spearheaded this effort to get a Navy ship named after the USS Fort Lauderdale. So Lynn and Pat, we miss him very, very much. But we do know in our hearts that it was Chuck that really helped in this effort. So uh, let's thank Chuck and, and his family you know, for all the effort that he made in trying to make this happen. So in closing, I have a gift. Captain? You do me the honor of accepting this small token of our appreciation. It's a... Uh, something that's not going to stay up. It's a, it's a small crystal with the picture of beautiful Fort Lauderdale. Warm greetings from the city of Fort Lauderdale. I hope you display it proudly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very generous gift. Thank you. Just to remind you, you need to come and commission the ship next year, and you know where we can be found. So thank, thank you so much. Thank you for your service, and thank you for everything you've done on our behalf. Thank you. Sir. Really appreciate it. Thank you. So we know why ships are built. We know what America is about. We know our standing in the world today. We know where our, where our challenges are and where our responsibilities are. America stands for freedom and equality, and these ships are there to defend that, to protect it, to protect each and every one of us. And uh, we thank those who, who serve on these ships to help deliver that goal. America has stood for over 200 years in trying to maintain those values. Um, I know we have our own challenges here at home. Perhaps we need to start a little nation building here at home as well. But we all know that as you defend us and as we respect one another going forward, that we are truly blessed, we truly honored. I want to thank you all for inviting me here today and may God bless America. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mayor Trentalis. As Kerry noted earlier, we are honored to welcome Miss Berger back to Ingalls as our ship's sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the Honorable Meredith Berger to the podium. Fort Lauderdale. Now, in these times, together doesn't quite look like what it used to. Some of us are here at Ingalls. Some of us are watching remotely from home. But we are all together in spirit. As the sponsor of the ship, there's usually a lot of talk about my spirit. But for the Fort Lauderdale, and Command Master Chief and I, we talked about how important this is yesterday. Together, everyone achieves more. The spirit of this great ship is formed and fed by those who built her, those who will sail her, and those who support her. The USS Fort Lauderdale family, together today. The ship's motto is, Together We Fight. Named for a special city in a special state, built by some of the most skilled people in their craft, and operated by our Navy and Marine Corps, the greatest fighting force the world has ever known. 
when it comes to the Fort Lauderdale, together we fight. I, as sponsor, and the city and people of Fort Lauderdale, as the ship's namesake, play an important part in that we. And Charlotte, Kate, Molly, Grace, you're all important in that too. You can really help. Through our ties to the ship, we strengthen the relationship between the military and the nation. This relationship is so important. As the Admiral said, in times of conflict and in times of peace, around the globe, around the clock, the Navy and the Marine Corps team are present, protecting our way of life. To help people realize that important mission and to stay connected to it, Navy names ships after people, places, and ideas that are special. And if there is one word that you can use to describe the city of Fort Lauderdale and probably the whole state of Florida, it is special. I'm an authority on this. I grew up there. It is a place that entertains and innovates. It is a place that brings together diverse people and ecosystems. It's a place that's not without its share of challenges, but it holds great promise. And whether you're a sailor or a spring breaker, it is always a favorite port of call. When it came to building a ship named after the city I call home, the talents of Ingalls were up to the task. Look at this. It is absolutely incredible built this. When I drove up to the shipyard yesterday and I saw this gray hole, it took my breath away. And I have to share, I was sitting next to Kate on the bus ride on the way in and the same thing happened. She just gasped. It's so impressive. Your hard work and talent has given the Navy and the Marine Corps another much needed ship in its fleet. You've given this to the nation. Together, we fight. And when it comes to the fight, you want to be on the Navy Marine Corps team. Flexible, adaptable, powerful, formidable. The ship and its crew will bring excellence to mission in amphibious assault, special warfare, expeditionary warfare, and humanitarian aid and disaster relief. I know this addition to the Gator Navy will make its namesake and nation proud. In a time where we've adapted to a new meaning of together, today shows us that despite adapting to that new meaning, together still has a lot of meaning. As the sponsor of this beautiful ship, it is my honor to be together with all of you today as we mark this milestone in the life of the ship. To the captain and crew of the USS Fort Lauderdale and all who sail her, focus on the fight. We've got the we. And know that always, together, we fight. Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Berger. For each christening, we randomly select a young lady who is affiliated with one of our shipbuilders to be the flower girl for our ceremony. The flower girl for the Fort Lauderdale is Miss Grace Rebecca Tanner. Grace is the daughter of shipbuilder Lee Tanner, Carpenter General Foreman, and Katie Tanner. Grace has a long line of family members who have worked at Ingalls, including her grandfather. Please welcome the flower girl for today's ceremony, Miss Grace Rebecca Tanner, as she presents flowers to our ship's sponsor.
Thank you. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, it is time to christen Fort Lauderdale LPD 28. Miss Berger, Mrs. Wilkinson, Captain Corasimo, and Mayor Trentalis will now make their way to the platform. In the name of the United States of America, I christen thee Fort Lauderdale. May God bless this ship and all who sail in her. concludes today's christening ceremony. Thank you all so much for joining us on this historic occasion. Please note that due to COVID-19 restrictions, the christening platform is closed and off limits. Buses will pick up our guests at the north end of the tent to take you back to your vehicles. Thank you for attending the christening of Fort Lauderdale LPD 28 and have a safe and happy weekend. <laughs>